okay I hope you can see that where oh, it's going white now but that's got a little dome on there which we can sand and fill to take care of and we're hoping that the gap filling is going to work on the sides so all we'll do is just have a quick squidge around with some glue just down into the intakes this way just to let that flow down like so right okay and we can leave that to one side for a moment to dry with our front fuselage and then we can move on to the next part which will actually be the actual air intakes themselves which are another tricky area to get to fit so we just cut them out from the sprue Obviously, when you're making your, your models, you want to avoid using filler at all costs. Filler isn't your enemy, as I joke about saying, because it's very, very handy for doing, um, you know, obviously fixing bad mistakes on kits, or perhaps you've made an error and bits and pieces like that. But the thing is with filler, if you're not very experienced with rescribing, for instance, and sanding, um, then it can cause a lot of work, especially if you're a fast builder. If you just like to build your kits and you know get on with it and have a great looking model at the end of it, you don't want to be spending a lot of time sanding and filling and then you've painted your model and then you find out there's a little bit of shrinkage has occurred um, because your filler has shrunk back over a week or so and you're left with a gap. And obviously if it's around sort of, you know, decal areas and things like that, you can't deal with it afterwards. Um, so that's it. So by using things like super glue in that, it's a quick way of getting around it and test fitting, and then you can move straight on. Um, we will be using some in a moment. I've got some um, squadron green putty here just to show you um, on this one how it goes. But for the moment, we're gonna carry on. Um, the next thing is these intakes, which have got some very nasty ejector pin marks on the inside. But what I'm going to do with this one, and I'll show you, we're going to scratch build some little covers that go over the edge, because they're not very nice intakes anyway. But it's little things which I'll show you at the end of this build, which can sort of improve your, your modelling. And bring your models to life, instead of them looking a bit sort of plain and boring sat on your shelf. Okay, so here's your covers here. So what we do, we just do one at a time. A little bit of glue just down the side. Push fit. Same with the top. Super glue in there. Now these are always been a bit problematic on Jaguars. Anybody who's built the Airfix kit knows the same problem. So we just make them look as best as we can for the moment. And then we're going to get the filler out. And we'll have a go with the filler. Just clean up these parts a bit. They're a little bit flashy. It may be that the kit is an early kit off the production run. And they tend to be a little bit flashy. Um, by flashy, we mean there's lots of little bits of plastic, little tags and things coming off of them. When the first few hundred go through the mold, they tend to be a bit like that with modern kits. In the olden kits, they all used to be like it and used to have to go around cleaning them up. But you get them when the kits, when the mold is new, and then you get them when they're very, very old, when they've sort of worn out. So we just do those. Okay, so we'll just do a, a let those dry for a moment. Okay, so the next um, big thing on the list is to have a look, see how we've got on. So we'll do it carefully, remove the rubber bands to see how it is. To look at really um, your, your way ahead, if there's huge big steps, if there's big gaps, you know, bits and pieces like that, to really just to see how the initial glue is going. Now that's still wet, so obviously we can't do anything with it for a while, but it, it lets you have a look now. So you can see, so we just take this one up as well. Okay, 
Okay, so we can have a look and now we can test fit the front half to the rear just to see what the joins like, if it's quite a nice fit, if it's a terrible fit, and then any problems we may have. And it actually is a very nice fit. It's a tiny little bit of flash. So all we'll do, if you take your file, quite a coarse side, make sure you're flat onto it like so. And literally just a couple of passes and it will get rid of any dead flashing around and might improve your fit. And it looks like got a little thing going on here where this is a little bit higher. So we just do little five swipes. So I think it's actually probably on this side. So okay, we're gonna get these two fitted. There again, we're gonna use the super glue. Purely for speed, obviously you could use normal glue, but it's a little trick. All I've done, I've got it just in here, as you can see. Okay. And then all we'll do, run it on the, the top lump on the inside, all the way around the back. Now you think, hold on, but that's not gonna glue on there. But you want it just to slightly roll over the edge. Like so. Okay. Bring it in a little bit. Alright, and then what you do, rub the outer part. So it's more of I can show you this doing a bit can. But if you rub the, rub the outside like that, then when you come together, you'll join. And then we're gonna hold that for a second. And as you're doing it, we'll just check our if the join is all okay, then we can hold it up just to move the super glue out and have a good look at those joins to make sure you're happy everywhere. And obviously from my point of view, just for speed, I'm still gonna squirt with a bit of kicker just to speed things up and push and hold. Bit of a blow just. Do, 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 do. Okay, now that's on there. What we do with your liquid cement, even though we've got the super glue, we're just gonna let this flow all the way around the outside because this will weld up any minute little gaps anywhere on the joint. And there we go, that goes in just like that. And that's our front fuselage now attached. Okay, the next thing on is these, um, the actual intakes. Now they scoop up from the bottom, so make sure you get the right one. And then you can test fit. And as you can see, they are quite a, a horrible fit. So there's two ways around that. One is the locating pegs underneath. We're gonna remove them completely. I'm just going to sand them off and then the back. Sorry, give me a shot. There we go. Back. Flat down like that. And then we're going to have another go. And as you can see, it's it's not a, a perfect fit by a long way, but it's a bit better. So all we're going to do, a generous amount of poly on the inside like that and we're just going to roughly stick that in place like so i'm going to put a bit of poly liquid all the way around like that so that's that side in and obviously we'll do the same with the other side we'll remove those tabs because they are useless Take the backing off, just like so. Same thing, generous amount. Get on. Now, by if I was doing this 
normally I would have sat there and probably spent the last half hour dry fitting that to make it to be a perfect join but because we want to show you how to use filler we've just done a rough job there to get them in position now that's on and in but you could have saved all that time by literally doing a little bit of test fitting, dry fitting, in, make for a perfect join. That's the way I work, that's the way I like to work. I don't like using filler, I don't like rescribing, and if I can avoid it, I will. Okay, so that's that's so on, that's gonna dry. And now we've gotta get these um, the gun pods on each side. Or would be gun pods. Okay, next is the gun pods in here. So same thing, generous amount of poly in there. We're just going to slide that in like so. There again, this is another one that's going to be a, a filler job, but perhaps if we were taking a little bit more time, it wouldn't be. Most, I say most things, probably 80% of all kits can be made without filler. That would be my estimate. Unless you're dealing with really, really awful kits. But I would say probably 80% can be done without the use of filler anywhere on them at all. But you do need to use it in certain circumstances. You really just, there is no way it's gonna test fit or it is gonna fit or anything else like that. You know, this is quite possibly one of those points that we're just about to find here. Okay, so what we've done, we've got some nasty big old joins in here to take care of. Obviously we've got things around these air intakes, various bits and pieces like that. So the last thing we're gonna do is just gonna pop the wing section on the top, and then what we can do is go around with a filler and start filling in, give that a nice generous time to dry, and then we can move on. But obviously we know we're gonna have problems with this top wing section as well, no doubt. Um, all I've done here is put up the, the uh, fences on the wings, apart from that, it's straight out, cleaned up. And as you can see, we've got big, big gaps going on down the back. So they're gonna have to be dealt with, but for the moment, we're just gonna sit him on top and roughly glue him in place. You know, this is a, an example of obviously no man to dry fitting and test fitting is going to make any difference to that box section going on the roof because it's going to be a gap and the gap would have to be taken care of. Okay, let's put that one in. Right, we'll just give that a few moments to dry off and then we'll start filling. Okay, there's lots of putties around on the market. Um, obviously, Tamiya make one, uh, Squadron do um, various different colors, which are different grades, um, fineness. I quite like the green putty. Um, there's other ones around, like you've got Model uh, Valero. They do their one model putty. Trouble with the Valero one, great for tiny little areas, but I tend to find that it's actually um, what's the word I'm after it's a bit like PVA glue it doesn't dry rock hard so when you're scribing it does have a tendency to drag out so I tend to use it literally small little areas where I'm not going to need to go near it again but if I need to rescribe I wouldn't recommend this at all because it doesn't dry rock hard or not that I've ever seen it do right um, tools for doing it I basically use bits of stiff obviously what like an acetate here which I've cut out of a an old parts box and then what I tend to do is just cut them to sort of you know thumb size squares and then you can make them into little shapes by cutting them into more sort of pointy areas you can get into tighter places and various bits and pieces but I know I shouldn't do it on clear really because you can't see but there we go that's those now when you're doing it some people pop down tape 
Um, so obviously you only do just the area you need. Other people just go for it in a big way. Um, I would recommend um, getting a bit of tape. Obviously any tape will do. I'll just use a bit of Tamiya tape for the moment. But literally you cut yourself off a strip and then uh, let's assume we're going to go down in here and then all I'll do is pop a strip on the side up over just like that like so So there we go. So when we put our filler in here, we're only doing that area and not filling in any other recessed panel lines as we go. But that's just one little way of doing it and you could go everywhere with it. Okay, so you have your, your thing. Sometimes you'll get like an oily residue off the top, especially if it's new. Now that's, sometimes you also, you've got like a greeny color. Literally that's just the dye, so don't worry about that. Then all you do, take your, Get a blob, pop it in a, a tray, and screw your lid on tight to stop it drying out. So there we go, we have it just like that. And then you can take your little spatulas you were making, okay, and just work it a little bit and get rid of that oil or mix it in, whichever you're going to do. Okay then, all you do, <clears throat> scoop a bit up on your thing and then just go along and just push it into that panel like so. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. So we pulled it in like that and obviously we've still got quite a bit on there so we're just going to do in there too. Now don't be going in there dragging in to get it perfectly smooth because don't forget this will shrink back. This will probably need to have, in most cases, two coats. So all we do, we're just gonna do this other bit here. Also, it's a good idea not to do it when your glue is still wet. Now obviously I've done this pretty speedily To show you but normally you would do it so here we go now this dry it doesn't take too long to dry you can get other types which dry under uv lighting and other bits and pieces like that which are all very clever um, but most of them depending obviously on the thickness it depends on how long it's going to take to dry But as long as it's smooth as you go, you'll be fine. Now, little things like um, here, we've obviously where it hasn't touched, we need to fill as well. That's quite straightforward. Nice blob in there. And then work it slightly more forward than you would. There we go, just like that. And you're gonna work your way around the entire model, absolutely everywhere that's gonna need it. And then literally, you could go and leave it in the sun. Obviously not a strong direct sunlight in front of a window because it's likely to melt, but certainly some nice fresh air blowing around it will speed up the drying times. But the drying time really does depend on how long, um, sorry, how thick the, it's actually on there. If you're on there really, really thick, it's gonna take a long, long time to dry. Um, obviously if it's on there very thin, it will dry within a few minutes. So really drying times, you know, the longer you can leave it, the better, because it's easier to sand. And obviously it will shrink back, as we were saying, the shrinkage business, um, it will shrink back. So 
certainly you have to allow for that otherwise you're going to sand it back have it lovely finish all looking gorgeous and great and then before you know it the next day comes along and there's a little dip um, where it shrunk back so I'm going to carry on filling the entire thing and I'll see you in a minute so okay there we go we're all done as I say I've done quite a slap happy job underneath there and around but as you can see if you were to use the tape way you get quite a nice finish versus just slapping it all over um, so we're going to leave this um, a couple of hours to dry off now this bit underneath here is probably going to take quite a long time but certainly these thin bits on the top we should be able to do pretty straight away as I say with all your sanding and filling make sure it's dried thoroughly otherwise you will get shrink back I can't emphasize that enough it is one of those things where it does happen I've had it happen to me and if somebody had told me at the time it was going to do it I would have left it longer so it is best to leave it if you can sort of 24 hours to dry totally off in the meantime, obviously, there's still lots of things you can be getting on with. You could be actually masking up um, and fitting the, the actual front canopy, wings, pylons, things like that. So this one's been drying now for 24 hours. Now, a good little way to test, if you get some um, a bit of filler um, that you've got floating around, perhaps a little bit afterwards, leave it, keep it there, and then you can try and dig your nail into it to make sure it's totally dry. Now, if these big thick bits are dry completely and it's all snappable, then you know this is going to be dry as well so it's just a quick cheap little way of testing to make sure you're going to be okay now um, got some files quite coarse ones and then they get softer same with sanding sponges and you can move on as you go so basically what we do we've got various seams all over it so literally starting with a quite a coarse and you lightly sand don't dig in heavily just little light movements and let the file do all the work you don't want to be pushing hard because you're going to go in there too heavy and you're actually going to be digging out the, the filler so let you, the actual file do all the work and then switch to the other side which may be your finer side now if we just do this area around here so obviously you know the area where we're going to be joining is across the top so we're keeping flat for that area at all times and just let with medium weight off of yourself as I say don't push in deep just light weight and let the file do all the work now as you're filing you'll be able to see I'll bring you in a little bit you can see the difference in color obviously the lighter and the darker where it's darker it's obviously still needs quite a bit of sanding and obviously where it's lighter you've done so all we do you go keep going all over that entire area then switch to your finer side and give it a bit of a rub and every now and again knock out your file or give it a rub things like that and we can just keep going that's it and we just do this one down the back here a little bit as well now don't worry about too much about losing your panel lines and going through them if you're doing it quite lightly the chances are they'll still be there anyway you won't totally lose them so there we go you get to this sort of stage then if you get that um, your sanding sponges perhaps you've actually got your sponges take quite a coarse one to start with and the same thing keep it flat and go against now the thing is when you're doing it don't go in front like this and then up because what you actually do is make a step when it hits make sure it's completely covering it and then go and just keep it flat on the top and it will just make sanding a lot lot easier and then as you can see we're getting through there's a this little lumpiness up the top here you see the difference in color that's where obviously with the plastic weld has happened and you're getting the two colors so we're just going to do a little bit in here okay then the same on the the front side here as you can see there we go it's blending in very very nicely then when you're almost there we just pull you out a little bit um, take another sanding sponge a, a, a finer one and give it a good rub with that and really what you're doing with the finer sponges you're taking out the scratch marks 
and that's what you're trying to do. All your work, if you like, is being done by the file and the courser. Your lesser one, you're still not sanding. You're really just trying to get rid of all the scratches perhaps you've made, everything else. Now a little t uh, trick, if you lick your finger, a bit of moisture, pop it over the join and give it a rub. Now it has to be totally dry to do this, but it will just help cut through there. And as you can see, we've just got a little bit there. And when you feel it with your finger, it should feel smooth. Obviously, if it's feeling rough or there's a, an obvious step there, then you can go back, add a little, bit, a little bit more filler to it and move on. Now, if we just carry on at the top here, oh, little areas just like in here, sometimes you get a step. Um, so if you take your, your file and just try and get it into that little 90 degree right angle by going flat to the side and then flat to the the base, just like that, just to try and work it out. Same again, we're just gonna wet. And when you wet, it just helps speed things up and helps keep things moving. There we go, just like that. We're just gonna wet this part. Make it quite nice and wet and it'll just help it all slide and help it all together. Okay, we'll take a bit of tissue here, to wipe that off. And then you want to feel, if you can feel any noticeable steps or joins or anything else like that. Now that feels quite smooth and quite nicely done. Now I've just done this part already. If you imagine we got to that stage, then all I did with some acrylic um, gray paint, in this case, like I just used um, XF53, this year, I just painted it on to where I'd been and sanded and filled. Now obviously I've still got this area here, we've still got this one up here. So what we're going to do, I've deliberately not very well sanded this area down here. So if I show you what I mean, all you do, come along with your, your course, type sanding sponge and you give a rub and as you can see you can see a line appearing so if I just carry on just like that and you can see this line running down the side and that is because there's a step there so that needs to be sort of refilled and retaken care of um, or file down. So what you can do, you can take your file, quite a coarse one as we were saying, and just give it a, a bit of a going like that. And as you can see, the gray isn't disappearing straight away because there's quite a bit of sanding and filling to go on. So we're just gonna keep going at the moment. And when that gray disappears, as it's starting to now, that means we're all level. That banging you can hear, I'm sorry, but we're having a new roof fitted. And apparently it's gonna take a month and there's not a lot we can do about that. So we're gonna to have to put up with the other little bangs. And you think I'm on the second floor of a three story house. So imagine what it's like if we were up in the old office. Um, so there we go, we'll wet this down. Give it a rub. Just like so, then we go in with our other finer sanding sponge just like that and if you can feel it's very nice and then we'll paint that with the gray and we'll check it again back here I know these are a bit better so if we give these a, a rub once you've done it still got a few bits to get out there but if you can see that too there's nothing really there there's no steps or anything happen so that's quite a nice one to do and then obviously we'll just do the same for this middle one which was that nasty one we put the super glue in as a filler so we just give this a good rub 
and there we go there's just a, a few little bits of green there but it's totally smooth to the touch as I say and we can do the same on the back area on that one there and that's it so there we go it shows the difference obviously that step at the front where we needed to take care of it versus that now this big area in here was the one we were worried about. I'm going to sand that and we'll get the rest of these areas done and then we'll talk about rescribing.